what a special uh, moment for our club. This was um, a really, really neat moment um, to experience and share with, you know, the, the players, the staff members that are here. Um, certainly a lot of people to, to thank, a lot of work that's gone into this, but um, all those people will be recognized in the coming days. Um, you know, that for Carl and the entire ownership group and the support this club's been uh, <clears throat> given um, to the staff members, the, the players, the fans, this is, um, this is really neat. So I want, I want people to really enjoy this. And uh, I know the guys in the other room are right now. So um, we look forward to uh, sharing this moment in front of our home fans on uh, Wednesday. Uh, Pat, do you feel like it was, did you think it was possible to do this in less than two seasons, which is what you have now, when you first got here? You think it's possible. Your, your, your ego, uh, the, the belief always has you thinking big. And whether people think it's realistic or not, uh, you know, that doesn't matter. You work to try to achieve these accomplishments. And... Um, and it's just a credit to a lot of the people that I just mentioned and um, really the, the players and the way they've performed and the way they've grown as a group and, you know, our entire technical staff, the front office, everybody. I, I just think over the two years we've become so strong as a, as a group that um, this is a possibility. So um, hopefully it's the beginning of uh, – you know, more success and, and more trophies for this club. Did you feel like it was fitting to have Aaron score the game winner, a guy that you collectively as a staff wanted mm -hmm. to bring in to expedite the, you know, this club's opportunity to win titles? And yeah. He scores the one that delivers the first in club history. I don't know if fitting is the right word. I just, there, there's a lot of players that you could uh, talk about where – their performances or the things that they've done are fitting to, you know, the success and in, in experiencing this moment. But he scored a big goal for us, uh, and uh, like you said, this is why he's here. And um, you know, he was one of many players that contributed in a way where, you know, we could be champions. Good card. Uh, congratulations on a night like this where you go up early. Did it, mm -hmm. Do you think it speaks to something about the nature of your team to be able to, in a night where there's so many stakes, yeah. to come back and push through and get the result you needed? Yeah, I think we started really strong. and <clears throat> I shouldn't say we started really strong. After about five minutes, we settled into the game, five, ten minutes, and had a really good 20, 25-minute stretch where we found the goals. And, you know, obviously the, the first goal – gives them a little bit of belief and it changes the momentum and um, the remainder of the half was was okay but you go into to the break at you know a 2-2 two -two and really if we could just look at or put the score line and, and put the how we conceded aside I thought there was a lot of good things that we were doing we just needed to keep our composure and guys were frustrated because they expect you know to be winning they expect not to be conceding goals and so it was just trying to make sure that we had the right approach coming out of the break, and um, you know I think the second 45 minutes was was strong. We conceded less, um, still created some good some good looks until we found the goal, and, and I think saw out the the game in a professional way. But um, yeah, it's of no surprise that we had a good response, and um, I think my job and our job is to just keep guys focused and 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 not losing their composure because things don't go their way all the time. Um, but that's what they expect. Not to double up on Pat's question, but Lucho gets the assist on the game-winning goal. Mm -hmm. Now that there is definitively something attached to your time and his time here, what does his captaincy tonight speak to you about yeah. his time here in general? Well, uh, his growth as a captain and his um, performances have led this team to a championship, so um, it, he could have had, I don't know, 
three, four, five assists today with how he was able to put his teammates uh, in on goal. But uh, it's nice to see that not just the growth of him as a player and him as a, a leader, but um, to now have a championship attached to that. That means a lot. So um, I'm really happy for him and, and, and the rest of the group that, um, you know, they're champions. That doesn't happen often. We'll go to the Zoom now and, uh, and Laurel. Laurel, you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, obviously, the, the first goal for Toronto was really uncharacteristic, um, the way it, it kind of went through Roman's arms and his legs. Um, did, did he seem rattled to you after that? Was there anything you needed to address with him at halftime? How, do you, how did you see him kind of handle that? The moments like that for me, and every everybody manager hands, handles it differently, but I didn't need to say anything to him. Every everybody knew that it was uncharacteristic um, in terms of how you know we conceded the goal. So it's just trying to to for me think about what we needed to do for you know him specifically and for us as a group to to rebound from it after the break. Um, and and that was a lot of the the conversation. So at halftime we. We don't talk about it, you know, in terms of an individual mistake. It was this is how we lost momentum in the moment, and you know this is what we need to to do coming out of the break to uh, uh, to to find the next goal in the game. So, um, no, I think it, after the game, just in speaking and and, and talking to him, um, he moved on from it. And my thought is, second half was was strong. I think the guys in front of him did a really good job just to. Uh, um, limit their chances at goal, you know, and that's also a sign of uh, strong teammates. You know, they know in that moment maybe if he was rattled, all right, we need to be better defensively. We need to um, be a little bit more uh, difficult to break down so that they're not getting chances on goal. And and I think those guys stepped up to to help their teammate. Yeah, I can't wait. Honestly, it's it's going to be a, a neat uh, a neat uh, moment and environment, and all of us sharing in that uh, you know that joy together is is something I'm really looking forward to. I know all these guys are because our our fans have been incredible for our our, our group. You know, I'll only speak of the last two years because um, I've seen. Our fan base uh, grow. I've seen them uh, back this team uh, in a way that others had prior, and it's it's really uh, it's special to see uh, them rewarded in a way like this, where they can celebrate a championship with uh, with their club. All right, we'll go to Kenta now on the Zoom. Kenta, can you go ahead? Congratulations on the supporters shield. Uh, Thank you. What were the halftime adjustments that you guys made? Because it felt like Toronto were getting a lot of you know, opportunities at goal in the first half. And, um, yeah. You guys were as well, but in the second half, it felt a bit more controlled in terms of the defensive effort that the back line had. Well, they had, they had shifted from, um, you know, a three in the build, or, you know, back three. It, it looked like. You know, a, a five, two, three, um, three, four, three, whatever you want to call it. Um, so in the build, there was some certain things early on that we were looking to do, but then they, you know, moved Michael into the middle, and um, so it was trying to find our <clears throat> our wing backs as as quickly as we could because they had a lot of time and space, and that was, you know, when we were, um, you know, in our defensive third, but in the middle third. Um, if we could find ways to switch play once they went into the back four, we were getting Santi and, and Alvaro in some really good spots where if we just you know, could find that direct switch of play, we could get them running with space and we could attack the box. So that was a little bit with the ball, um, you know, getting our front three a little bit more connected when we were building down one side to, to allow um, more numbers to help us get out of pressure and then switch play. But... 
Um, defensively, it was we, we were I think dropped off a little too often when we uh, turned the ball over. So, um, or when they turned us over. So we needed to get a little bit more pressure into the midfield, uh, so they couldn't, um, you know, find, you know, specifically Bernadeschi, but uh, players to be able to run at our back line. I thought we, we could have been a little bit more aggressive um, in how we were defending forward. So those were a couple of things we talked about. Last one with Pat. Yeah. I accomplished this with three games to spare, uh, and then there's a long break between mm -hmm. the second to last and, la and decision day. What's the best way to manage that, these remaining yeah. matches, and what do you want to get? Uh, obviously, the uh, the points record is still on right. the table for you guys, but big picture going into the postseason, what are you trying to get out of these last three games? Well, we feel like if, you know, we can, if, let me think about how I want to phrase this. We can get the points record regardless of who's on the field. And now it's about managing um, these games in a way where, yeah, we have a quick turnaround going into the Red Bull game. So it's it's not necessary to risk players um, if the recovery uh, isn't there. But we're going to put out a strong team and um, and look to, to maintain – maintain fitness for players because um, you don't want guys, you know, you, you, we're not just going to do wholesale changes and have guys that are off for, for weeks leading into uh, the playoffs. So um, this next game will probably be the one that we look at um, just with uh, really the next two, how we balance out um, the rotations to, to make sure we're fresh and not pushing guys uh, in an unnecessary way because it's about keeping guys healthy. Um, but uh, we'll still uh, look to, to go out and win a game on Wednesday. But the next couple of days will just determine how we, uh, you know, decide on the starting group. And um, likely guys won't be playing three games this week if, if we don't need them to. So, um, you know, there's a plan for that. But... We'll finalize that in the, in the coming days. Thank you very much for your time, Pat. All right, thanks.